Hello, my name is David Roos, and I'm back to complete the second half of today's lecture on genes to therapeutics, designing and mining pathogen genome database resources. In the first half of today's lecture, we talked about an introduction to the plasmodium parasites responsible for human malaria, and I reminded you that these microbial eukaryotes, nucleated cells, have genomes too, and that we are interested in those genomes both for the interesting biology of the uh, parasite that they can inform and as a clue to identifying therapeutics that might be effective in controlling uh, malaria. I also discussed the discovery of the apicomplexin plastid, a distinctive organelle acquired when an ancestor of these parasites ate a eukaryotic alga or was invaded by that alga, depending on your perspective, indicated in, in green here, an organelle that is the target for certain classes of antibiotics, validating it as a target for new drug development if only we knew what this organelle did. And in the second half of today's lecture, which will also be divided into two parts. We will discuss, first of all, genomic approaches for characterizing the functions of this organelle, and secondly, a more general genomic approach for identifying drug and vaccine uh, targets. Now, as you recall from the earlier part of the lecture, we know several things about this organelle. We know that it harbors its own episomal genome that was very informative for giving us insight into the evolutionary origins from a plant or a, 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 a plastid. And so while most of the metabolic functions or presumed metabolic functions of this organelle are likely to be encoded in the nuclear genome, we imagine that those genes will harbor traces of their plant or algal ancestry. So we might search through the emerging omic sequence uh, databases to try to identify uh, targets that show known similarity to plant or algal sequences. Similarly, we know from cell biological studies that proteins are trafficked into the organelle using a distinctive bipartite targeting signal, fusing a secretory signal sequence usually used for secreting proteins outside of a cell, let's say for hormones secreted into the blood pancreatic enzymes secreted into the gut. And fusing that signal, which mediates translocation across a single membrane, with the plastid targeting signal, which is known to mediate translocation into uh, the chloroplasts or mitochondria, endosymbiotic uh, organelles. We can use those, uh, th those, those uh, 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 markers of apicoplast proteins to examine uh, uh, predicted genes or open reading frames or sequences from these parasites to identify candidate nuclear encoded uh, parasite genes in what is fundamentally a computational experiment. Now, we can imagine many proteins that might yield false positive results. There might be other reasons why proteins show similarity to plants or cyanobacteria and you should think about what those reasons might be. There might be, there will certainly be many other proteins that have secretory signal sequences or the long and terminal extensions that are hallmarks of plastid targeting domains, but we are looking for the intersection of those. We are looking to try to sequentially Im impose these in sort of a decision tree kind of analysis to identify candidate nuclear encoded plastid genes. And when we screen through the parasite genome, we identify genes like this one. Here's a gene that has a unequivocal N-terminal hydrophobic secretory signal sequence as indicated in pink. That's followed by an N-terminal domain and while the plastid targeting signals are not very well conserved, they're certainly rich in basic amino acids in these uh, organisms, and a C-terminal domain that shows unequivocal phylogenetic similarity of ferredoxin, the terminal electron acceptor for photosynthesis. Now, malaria parasites are not green. They don't grow better in the sun. They don't photosynthesize. They presumably use this ferredoxin for recycling, reducing equivalents. But its phylogenetic ancestry argues that this is a likely candidate 
nuclear encoded plastid gene. Here is the other uh, vestigial photosynthesis gene found in these parasites, plas uh, ferrodoxin NADP reductase. And what we've done in this case is taken those long N terminal extensions, the bipartite targeting signal that uh, was hyp that, that, that was shown through, through cut and paste molecular genetics and cell biological experiments to mediate translocation to the apicoplast, and fused that targeting signal from plasmodium to a fluorescent protein reporter and, and show that it, in fact, does mediate targeting into the apicoplast, as indicated in green. Co-location, which co-localizes beautifully with a previously validated nuclear-encoded apicoplast protein, as shown in the previous uh, segment. So in an overnight experiment by transient transfection in toxoplasma parasites, we can demonstrate that these plasmodium proteins are indeed targeting into the uh, apicoplast using toxoplasma as a model for plasmodium. And similar studies have led to what is now a complete metabolic pathway map for the apicoplast, carried out the work of many laboratories, but particularly in collaboration with my colleague Jeff McFadden in Melbourne and students and postdocs in his laboratory and mine. We now know that the apicoplast uh, genome, which was so informative in identifying this organelle, is replicated within the apicoplast, transcribed into RNA, and translated to produce a few, few proteins which are combined with the bulk of the apicoplast proteins that are encoded in the nucleus and post-translationally imported. Those proteins combine to carry out three metabolic pathways. The synthesis of, of, of heme using the same pathway observed in uh, humans and, and other animals and, and, and fungi, but distributed a little bit differently between different, uh, uh, di different organellar compartments. And also two novel pathways the synthesis of xylulose through a, a synthesis of isoprenoid units through from, from a xylulose precursor, and the synthesis of fatty acids. And while both of these are metabolic products that are produced by uh, by human cells, they're produced by distinctive pathways, a type two fatty acyl synthase, more characteristic of the plant or algal uh, plastid ancestor of the of the apicoplast. Uh, and the DOCS-P pathway, the xylulose pathway for isoprenoid biosynthesis. We know much more about this from work in many labs. We know in particular from work uh, uh, by uh, in, in Joe DeRisi's lab at UCSF and in Boris Strepin's lab at University of Georgia that the, that the xylulose pathway is critical for parasite survival. Many of these targets are under investigation actively as potential uh, uh, drug targets. And here in a long series of studies that is summarized by this graphical animation, um, we can outline this, uh, the, this remarkably rapid path from the identification of the, of the 35 KB episomal DNA as the target for macrolide antibiotics to phylogenetic studies, which were so informative in telling us about the origin of the apicoplast, to computational database mining strategies that led to the identification of the complete metabolic pathway map, and now through to clinical studies carried out by various groups, most notably Peter Kremsner in, in, uh, in Germany and working in Gabon, that have led to the exploration of, of candidate drugs that are, that are now in, in uh, clinical trials. So with this, I'd like to uh, uh, raise a couple of questions. Question set three. I uh, include is the following uh, questions. Question 3.1, what criteria were used to identify nuclear-encoded apicoplast proteins? Did they, A, contain a plastid targeting domain? B, contain a secretory signal sequence? C, contain, I exhibit phylogenetic similarity to plant and algal genes? D, display any one of the above, A, B, or C? or E, all three of the above, A, B, and C. Question 3.2. A short essay question. What other genes, what false positives might emerge from your search for nuclear-encoded apicoplast proteins, and why would you expect these to emerge from your computational search? Question 3.3. 3. 
why test plasmodium protein targeting in toxoplasma? Is it because A, it's experimentally easier, B, because plasmodium is dangerous, C, because apicoplast structure and function appears to be identical in these two species, D, for two of the are above reasons, or E, for all three of the above reasons. And question 3.4, what metabolic pathways distinguish the apicoplast from human metabolism? Is it A, glycolysis, B, photosynthesis, C, heme biosynthesis, D, the xylulose pathway for isoprenoid biosynthesis, or E, more than one of the above? I'll give you a couple of moments to think about those. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, question 3.4, another short answer essay question. Why do we care about what metabolic pathways distinguish the apicoplast from human metabolism? All right, finally, uh, I hope that uh, you are as, as, uh, as excited as, as we have been by this dramatic demonstration of the power of computational database mining to identify therapeutic targets, candidate therapeutic targets for malaria. But more generally, it quickly became clear that these same sorts of questions that we use to identify plant genes and malaria parasites might also be used by others to asking other very different kinds of questions. And that gave rise to the development of the Plasmodium Genome Database over the past uh, uh, decade or more. A resource that can be mined to ask other questions related to the biology of these parasites, vaccine targets, or, or what have you. And this project has been quite successful has led to the expansion of what was once the Plasmodium Genome Database to encompass other apicomplexan parasites, such as Toxoplasma and Cryptosporidium, other protozoan uh, parasites, and indeed uh, 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 fungal uh, uh, microbial pathogens as well in what is now the Eukaryotic Pathogen Genome Database, which I hope that you will be interested to explore. The philosophy behind all of these UPathDB databases is to integrate curated annotation with automated analyses, providing rapid access to both finished and unfinished, that is, draft uh, data that is emerging at an unprecedented rate from biological experiments, as you have heard over the course of this uh, lecture series. By incorporating and integrating diverse data types, genome and transcript sequences, polymorphism data, expression profiling data, clinical data, proteomic data, interactome data, structural data, pathway data, metabolomic data, publication data, phenotyping data, and so on. Our goal is to enable researchers to ask their own questions. So let me be clear here. The goal is not to produce an encyclopedia of genomics where you could look up the answer to any question because no encyclopedia until recently would have allowed you to look up the answer for, to what seems like a nonsensical question, find plant genes and malaria parasites. The goal is to develop uh, uh, hypotheses in silico that can then be tested at the laboratory bench. And the response to these resources has been quite uh, uh, remarkable. Thousands of unique users every day from, uh, from over 100 countries. The average user returns uh, on on a weekly uh, basis, and there have been extensive uh, citations. Let me give you an example of what I mean. We'll turn now to the Plasmodium Genome Database, and I would like to suggest that you can analyze this or any genome resource that you may be interested in, whether your interest focuses on malaria parasites, humans, Drosophila, uh, uh, Cenorhabditis elegans, or any other organism. You might imagine that you'd want to explore these genome databases in a gene-centric view. This is essentially a, an encyclopedic view of, in this case, a uh, prominent antigen in malaria parasites, AMA1, which has been explored as a candidate vaccine target. This is a gene. It's ne next to other genes that are upstream and downstream, and we can see that it's highly conserved across various different malaria parasite uh, species. We can see that there is, it's highly variable when we compare one species to another, as, as indicated by the diamonds here, uh, that 
uh, it is highly expressed at the protein level. We can see that it is transcribed at particular stages of the parasite life cycle, particularly upregulated at, a, at late stages of the life cycle, the schizont stages that, uh, that are released from uh, parasites and the merozoite stages that invade into those parasites. We can look at the expression of these, of these proteins in clinical samples and, and so on. We can also examine genes like this gene or others from a genome-centric viewpoint. We can see, for example, as you've already seen, that there are hundreds of genes associated with this particular uh, chromosome, that those genes, how those genes are organized and how they compare between one species and another. We can zoom into a particular region to see genes that are conserved, as those over at the left, or genes that appear to have diverged, such as this family of merozoite surface proteins that are another set of proteins that have been con of considerable interest as candidate uh, uh, therapeutic targets, uh, vaccine targets, or for understanding the biology of differentiation of malaria uh, parasites. We could look at metabolic pathways, mapping, for example, the predicted genes onto known metabolic pathways, as has been done here, here in color-coded format for Toxoplasma, Plasmodium, Cryptosporidium, and human. And this illustrates the uh, xylulose pathway for isoprenoid biosynthesis, which is clearly carried out by, uh, by, human, by, by Plasmodium and Toxoplasma, indicated in green and red, using a different pathway than that used by humans. This is the HMG-CoA reductase pathway for, uh, for synthesis of sterols in, in, in humans suggesting that the red and green pathway here might be a candidate therapeutic uh, target. The third way that we might imagine mining these genome database resources is through a query-centric view. Here, for example, is a query using the Plasmodium genome database to identify candidate vaccine antigens using a series, a, 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 a Boolean strategy that's based on a variety of fairly straightforward, computationally accessible questions, like those questions we used to identify the apicoplast genes previously. We are looking for genes that uh, are, uh, 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 that, that uh, uh, appear to have known epitopes in plasmodium parasites, and may also be, uh, or, or may be polymorphic, based on resequencing projects transforming these by orthology to identify those only in Plasmodium falciparum, asking for genes that are secreted or have, and have a transmembrane domain that might be uh, appropriate, uh, might be a surface expressed and therefore accessible as a vaccine antigen, and are expressed at the right time or the right place. And in this particular computational experiment, which I don't have time to go into in detail, uh, but which you can explore yourself by using the URL that's indicated in pink here on your screen. This URL, which can be shared, allowing individual investigators to refine computational strategies. This computational experiment identifies a series of 27 uh, genes, including the positive controls for this experiment, two uh, 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 leading vaccine antigen targets in clinical trials for malaria now, a variety of other proteins indicated in, in yellow that are, have been of interest to malaria vaccinologists, and yet other proteins that are of as yet unknown function that might be of interest to explore. These kinds of strategies have been explored by many vaccinologists, uh, biologists who know more about the biology of these parasites than I hear, a reference to a paper by... Uh, by, uh, by uh, Isabel Ochola from Kenya and David Conway from the Gambia and the London School of Tropical Medicine that you might want to look at for a complementary approach to try to identify through database mining candidate nuclear uh, candidate vaccine antigen targets in plasmodium parasites. From the standpoint of identifying drugs, you might want to ask questions about not just genes but also about small molecules that may inhibit them, and this. Uh, and, and this uh, URL indicated at the lower left directs you to a chemigenomics database for target discovery that combines both gene information 
and, uh, and small molecule information, which once again I won't go through in detail, but which I urge you to try to investigate and explore on your own. You might, for example, be interested in developing drugs that uh, are predicted to be enzymes, as the targets for many known drugs are, that are, are, are small and perhaps therefore easily expressed for crystal structure solution, that have a phylogenetic distribution that suggests that they would not be uh, targeted in the human host, since we're interested in trying to control the pathogen and, and not uh, kill the patient, uh, that or genes that have a variety of other uh, attributes of particular interest. In this case, I've applied a series of questions to another protozoan parasite, causative agent of sleeping sickness, Trypanosoma uh, brucei, but we could turn the same series of questions to ask about plasmodium, and in this computational experiment, you'll see that we identify a number of validated drug targets, for example, the dihydrofolate reductase target for antifolate anti therapeutics that I indicated at the beginning of the lecture were a uh, historically very important in treatment of malaria. We could turn these to look at these same computational approaches to look at uh, non-eukaryotic microbes such as uh, the mycobacterium tuberculosis, the causative agent of, uh, of, uh, of tuberculosis. So finally, let me bring you back to uh, the last set of questions for this lecture. In general, question 4.1, in general, if not for every gene, is gene organization, or syntony, maintained between different plasmodium species? A, yes, or B, no. And note that while we've looked at some specific examples, in order to answer this question in greater generality, you may be, uh, need to explore the plasmodium genome database at plasmodb.org. In general, if not for every gene, are expression patterns that is, transcriptional profiles maintained between different plasmodium strains. Once again, answer you A, yes, or B, or no. And again, you may need to look at the plasmodium genome database to answer this uh, question in greater uh, detail. Question, uh, uh, question 4.3. What database sources would you run if you wanted to identify nuclear encoded apicoplast genes? And finally, a thought question that we'd raised at the beginning, what criteria would be most useful for identifying candidate therapeutic targets in the parasite genome? And you should, of course, feel free to explore this at plasmodb.org, tdrtargets.org, and elsewhere. Let me point out that in exploring these database resources, you can perform a tremendously useful function. These database resources are designed for you as students, as researchers, and questions that you have are questions that we'd like to, uh, uh, or problems that you have in using these resources, we would like to know about. Because these resources are developed by a large team of individuals who are not biologists, by and large, but are database developers, uh, uh, data loaders, systems administrators, database administrators, and, and, and so on, whose job it is to produce resources that are useful to you. And these computational tools can be readily applied to various other organisms, whether it's the organisms supported in, in, in UPATHDB or the organisms that are supported in by other omics resources that you may be interested in exploring for your own research on humans or mice or worms or flies or plants or whatever organisms you may be interested in. And finally, I'd like to point out that uh, for those who are interested in online course resources, uh, and particularly uh, those related to the cell biology, and in some cases genomics of pathogens or various other uh, uh, cells, you may be interested in a complementary uh, uh, resource developed by the American Society for Cell Biology in conjunction with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, the iBio seminar series with a URL that is indicated at right. I hope this has been uh, of, of interest to you, and we'll certainly be curious to see your responses and your answers to the questions that have emerged. Thanks very much.